my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much and remain blessed. Six weeks. That is the ultimatum given to President Mohammed Bouhari. How does the president receive this kind of threat or uh, ultimatum? Uh, will he be able to fix things within this frame of time? Let's get some reactions from the presidency. I'm being joined by the president's uh, media advisor, Mr. Femi Adishina, joins us virtually. Thank you so much, Mr. Adishina, for joining us tonight. Let me get your reaction. How does your principal react to this? How does he receive this kind of ultimatum? The lawmakers have made up their mind that in six weeks, if the security situation does not change in the country, they will begin an impeachment move on him. Thank you, good evening. You said the lawmakers. But earlier you had said minority lawmakers. The truth is that in this kind of scenario, minority will always have its say. Well, the majority will have its way. You know the configuration of the National Assembly, the configuration of the Senate. Those who spoke today are the minority of minorities. They will have their say as is needful in a democracy, but well, do not go beyond that. I think it was just bravado. And uh, uh, very sadly, security is not something you subject to bravado. And uh, you don't begin to issue flippant ultimatums in something that is a matter of life. And death. They know in their hearts of hearts that they, they cannot achieve what they're saying. They're just wasting the country's time, wasting the time of uh, the upper chamber of the National Assembly. They know that they can't achieve it. It's the matter, because uh, this uh, proceeding was just about the time when the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting was going on. Did this filter into that meeting was it raised at a meeting? If it was raised, what was the reaction of the president on it? No, he didn't filter in at all. Not at all. And it was an unusually long meeting today because there were so many things to discuss, particularly the medium-term expenditure framework of uh, next year's budget. It took a long time to uh, reach a conclusion on that issue. And uh, it was after we had left the council chamber that I got to my office and I saw the news scrolling. And later I got uh, the, the, the complete content of what happened. By then, the president himself had retired uh, from the council chamber. I didn't see him again till we left the office. So I've not had the opportunity to communicate with him on the this issue. Uh, I doubt if it has also been officially communicated to the president yet, but I hope it will be done. Now there is um, earlier son uh, who interface between the National Assembly and the president. But before we get back into uh, the meat of what was been what was said on the floor of the Senate. Let's talk about the threats that, uh, I mean, the Abuja city for anyone, uh, anyone who is living in Abuja will feel a bit uncomfortable with, uh, for some of the reports and the news that are coming. Um, the, the law school um, call to bar program uh, was taken out of the venue uh, into town, taken away from the law school. Um, uh, in fact, uh, the federal government, the Ministry of Education has said uh, the FGC uh, in um, quality should uh, be shot because of security threat. Uh, there are gunshots that have been heard in town, the attack on the presidential guard. Has the president reacted officially to some of these threats that he's knocking on his doorstep? Well, uh, you said that uh, gunshots have been heard in town. I'm not aware of that. There have been rumors all over the place. So I, I don't think you are depending on those rumors. What happened in Kubwa is in the public domain. Well, in Buari is in public domain. Um, everybody knows that. But to say there were gunshots in town, I'm not privy to that unless you want to substantiate it. 
Now, the question is, um, are those minority lawmakers responding now because the thing is coming near to Abuja, their comfort zone? Is that why they were playing to the gallery as we saw them earlier? Well, they are Nigerians. They have a right to talk about what is happening in the country. Everyone is concerned. But if they were like uh, going into that bravado because it's coming nearer hope to them, then it's not altruistic. They are just mindful of themselves, of their own well-being, of their own security. What matters now is the security of the entire country. And like the president has always said, he's doing his level best, and he will continue to do it. Our security agencies will also up the ante, and they will do better. Tomorrow, the president has summoned another security meeting with the head of the security agencies. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, if you've been following the news, uh, Mr. Adishino, um, uh, right here we reported the situation at that federal government college where some of uh, uh, the eyewitness accounts said they were hearing gunshots at night. Um, uh, this is in Abuja. Uh, so, I don't know. They have, has that been substantiated enough? Uh, is, is that enough for the president to react? I mean, does that fit in into the kind of reaction that... Um, I mean, the kind of uh, um, did you, did you question determine, that could get the kind of reaction that we need. Did you determine where the gunshots came from? If indeed there was gunshot in town, was it from the security agencies who were combing all those areas to flush out those who are hiding in uh, bushes and forests? You you need you 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 first need to be sure whether it was a gunshot of a confrontation. If it was not confrontation and it came from the security agencies, then it's for good. We shouldn't just conclude. That is a gunshot, Mr. Adishina, I believe. A gunshot in Nigeria is a gunshot in America, is a gunshot in Canada. It doesn't change the fact. When you hear gunshot in a city like Abuja, it's unusual. And so when people say they heard gunshot, and students have been taken away from school. Uh, a private university is going to shut, I mean, I actually told their students to go home, right here in Abuja, there's some kind of tension and apprehension in town. And that's why, I mean, perhaps for those who are asking, that they needed to hear from the president to address him, uh, address them on the state of, the, uh, of security, which according to them, is deteriorating. We're seeing terrorists attacking a correctional facility right here in Kuge, in Abuja. So these are situations calling for attention of the number one citizen of the country. And those who are asking for the president to react to some of these things directly, speaking to them, are they right or wrong? Or how would the president react to this kind of situation? The very next day after that correctional facility was attacked, the president was there and he spoke. Your station carried it. So what else? What else? Uh, he just now so the, president, the president, with this kind of situation, because if I, rem if I rem uh, let me remind you, Mr. Adesino, one of the things after about a year and a half or two, um, uh, when we ask you and your colleagues in government about the security situation, you are quick to make reference to the situation in Abuja, where you made reference to the fact that there were attacks on the United Nations building, there were attacks on uh, the police headquarters, but those are ne not happening. But recently, we are seeing attacks very close to Abuja and its, met uh, its uh, vicinity and the perimeters of the, of the nation's capital. In fact, the terrorists threaten that they were going to kidnap a governor and also kidnap a president. These are some of the reports that we are hearing. And perhaps you do not think that a president, perhaps based on what some Nigerians are asking, directly need to address them to calm the tension or perhaps to allay the affairs on this kind of situation. You don't think it's needed? It could also be that the terrorists knew that we were going to amplify their threats. And that was how they made those threats. They know that the media print electronic will amplify what you are going to say. Like it is said, the oxygen that the terrorist needs is the media, is publicity. So you are giving them that oxygen. And that was why they made those threats, because they knew that, well, 
um, politics today is saying what well, Ivalue was going to amplify whatever they say. And that's what you have just done. I, I, I live in town in Abuja here. You live within the fortified walls of the Astro Rock <laughs> Villa. This is not about amplification. Uh, interestingly, you are on this other side of the divide, Mr. Additional. You were in the media as a practitioner, a senior one at that. Uh, the question is, when the attack Kuji Correctional Facility, was that a warning enough to, for you to be amplified? When the Minister of Education said, go away from school, was that just drawing attention or something that we need to really pay attention to? The question tonight, Mr. Additional, is what the government is doing differently to stop some of these security threats. Fine. Going direct to your question, what the government is doing is to address these issues. I just told you a short while ago that the president has summoned the security meeting for tomorrow. They are not going to be drinking coffee or tea there and those patting themselves on the back. It's going to be a frank discussion, and it will be how do we sort these challenges that we have. Of the comments of some of the lawmakers uh, made, they made reference to, uh, is the statement made by the president, they alluded to the fact that the president said, look, the situation of the country, he, can, he cannot wait to, I mean, he, he pities the person who is coming after him about the situation of the country. And while they're asking the president to leave office, um, for those who think that it was justified, uh, uh, perhaps those who think that things are deteriorating, uh, how, what do you tell them? Would you say that it is not, or would you say things are getting better? How, what would it, what would it be telling Nigerians tonight, Mr. Adishina? Well, we have plenty of anarchists in this country. I've had a very senior lawyer, somebody we respected so much, who was talking yesterday, asking the president to resign, the president was tired. He's an anarchist, even though he's a senior lawyer. Some of those lawmakers are anarchists. Instead of trying to mollify the situation in the country, instead of talking sensibly, instead of appealing to the positive sentiments of Nigerians, they are stoking the fire. They are anarchists. But the news we have for them is that many more Nigerians are positive than the anarchists we have in the system. Perhaps uh, we might want to anchor on this. First, I, I'd like to know whether or not the president will take a political move to douse the tension in the Senate, whether or not the minority lawmakers mean what they say, whether they are going to... Uh, I'm not sure any president will open his eyes or look on as an impeachment move is going to be made on him. Uh, this is not the first time we are hearing this in the country, but... Would there be any political move by the president to react to address the situation, politically speaking? Okay, before I take that, let me add to the last uh, response I made. Some of those who spoke also referred to NSAS, that what is going to happen is going to be worse than NSAS. Now the question is, is NSAS something anybody should be in Nigeria? NSAS was anarchy. NSAS was panic. NSAS was cannibalism. NSAS was all that was wrong with the society. Now for anybody, whether lawyer or not, whether labor leader or not, to say what is coming is going to be worse than uh, NSAS. That person is an anarchist. I repeat it, pure and simple, an anarchist. Now to your question. Um, what will the president do? The National Assembly has a self-regulating mechanism. It is so composed that uh, minorities cannot uh, uh, have their way. They cannot force things down the throats of the majority. Unfortunately, in that chamber or in the two chambers, you have sensible people who will say, no, yes, we have a challenge of security in the country. The president is doing his best. It has been addressed. Let us continue to encourage the security agencies to even do better. If the president is not coming to wave a magic wand and solve this problem, nobody has that magic wand. It is something that will be done methodically. It is something that will be done systematically. It is something that will be done by the affliction of time. It is not 
going to be by a magic wand. There's no magic wand to solve this kind of uh, problem. Quickly, Mr. Adeshina, and this is perhaps how we anchor on this question. Um, seven and a half years, and so some Nigerians will be asking you the question tonight, how difficult it is for you uh, perhaps to defend what your government has promised Nigerians. Security is perhaps what your government boasted, that you have a general who is going to fix security situation in the country. Um, is it a matter of this government hiding his uh, head in shame, considering what you boasted of, your, your campaign promises, and when you say methodologically or me methodically, the, the language in which which you use the question will, you, uh, will be will be how many t more time or how many more months do we need to see the methodological approach to how to solve this situation that some people have described as a failure well people who have described it as a failure have rights to their opinion it doesn't make them right there are millions of nigerians who still believe that the government has done and is doing his level based on this matter of security now um yes the 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 the, the party promised that it will secure the country and listen to the president anytime talk about his three priorities for nigeria right from first term to second term and now to 10 months one day to the end of the administration he will say one we will secure the country two we will revive the economy, and three, we will fight corruption. Those three still remain as its topmost priorities. Now, when you want to assess a government, you assess that government by what it has promised to do and how far it has gone in achieving those promises. In security, consider the first year of the administration in the first year. Was it the same way? As it inherited? No, there was improvement in the security situation in the country in the first year. In fact, the security, the insurgency, which was the main problem in the country, was beaten. That up to the point that it was said that uh, Boko Haram had been technically degraded. But you see that later there was a resurgence. Not only a resurgence, it became hydra headed. Insurgency was the main problem in 2015. Later, bandit returned. Later, kidnapping joined. Later, court killing joined. It became hydra head. And so, you don't be begin to now say a government has failed for a problem that suddenly spiraled out of control. Security is a challenge. Ten months, one day to the end of the administration, anything can still happen. A lot can still happen. You don't begin to conclude that it has failed on security when its time is not up yet. For all you know, one week, two weeks, one month, two months, this problem may be over. It can get done. That is how we should be positive-minded. And of course, there are uh, successes in different areas. Infrastructure, agriculture, social security, many, many, many. So you don't take just one issue and use it to conclude that the government has failed. It's never done. There's, a, there's no government in any part of the world that, that solved all the problems in the country. It has never happened, and it will not happen. It's up to Nigerians to judge uh, how they feel. They were the ones who voted for your party and your government. It's up to them to judge. But one thing that we are hoping, I'm an incredible optimist about the fact that Nigeria will get better and we can get things done. Yes. Thank you so much indeed, Mr. Yes. Fred Adeshina, for joining us. It's been, President Buhari is a special advisor on media. Thank it, you indeed it, for your thoughts. But don't also forget. All right, thank you so much indeed. We'll take a break, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience to watch from the beginning to the end. I hope you have learned something from the video you have just watched. The video you have just watched is to bring information to your doorstep and for educational purpose. It is not to demonize anybody. Let us watch continuously and see who can be able to make a sense out of every nonsense we are seeing. We must continue. We move. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra is here. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed to the channel, 
please kindly subscribe to the channel click the notification bell so that you notify each time i upload a video you will be among the first to receive it thank you and remember bless bye bye see you again Thank you.